Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna have, first, we're gonna talk about Arnold actually sort of apologizing for what he said when he said screw your freedom, and also a little bit more about Redcon 1 pulling out of Arnold Classic, boycotting, not sponsoring Arnold Classic anymore. We also have a new main sponsor of Arnold Classic, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more and other things about this topic. So, first of all, Arnold replied to Nick's strength and power. He replied to his video and basically said this. Thank you for sharing the context. I think I'm going to write in my newsletter this month about how we need to be careful in these days about being misguided by the internet. Sometimes I wonder if it is better to be uninformed than misinformed. I also wrote a column to give more of my thoughts on what I said that you can read here says Arnold himself. So first I have to give props to Nick Strength and Power for making this huge of a bodybuilding YouTube news outlet YouTube channel and that Arnold Schwarzenegger himself is commenting because he knows this is basically the number one news outlet in bodybuilding. I have to admit, me personally, to be honest, I don't really watch his videos, but I check them from time to time to see if there are any news that I missed. But I do aspire to achieve success that Nick achieved. It's really great that Arnold is actually commenting on his YouTube videos, so this is amazing. It's really motivating to have Arnold comment on your stuff and I hope it's not really motivating him because I want him to work less and eventually retire so I can take over. <laughs> Anyways guys, Arnold commented and he gave us a link and this is basically what he said. He said a lot of things, you can check the link if you want, but this was the part that I found very interesting. So he says, I'll admit, calling people schmucks and saying screw your freedom was a little much, even I stand by the sentiment. But there is nothing that I'm more passionate about than keeping America great and it is the only subject that can make me lose my temper. So what he says basically is that he lost his temper, he didn't really mean it. He said something and it was too much what he said. That's what he says, so he kind of took it back. I don't know if it is too late for you guys, I gave him a benefit of a doubt to wait and see what's gonna happen, because if he really means that, uh, screw your freedom, that's not a good thing, that, that's not a good thing to say, <laughs> for sure, but now he kind of took it back. And again, Arnold, he did so much for bodybuilding community, he contributed so, so much, if there wasn't for him, maybe you guys wouldn't be following bodybuilding today, maybe I wouldn't be making this video, maybe you just wouldn't be listening to me right now, today, I maybe wouldn't be competing, we wouldn't know bodybuilding as it is right now, if there wasn't for him. So, it will take a lot for me to lose my loyalty to him, to turn my back to him. What he said about freedom, that was bad, that was horrible, but he took it back. Fortunately, I gave him a benefit of a doubt and it seems like he didn't really mean it. So I think we probably shouldn't be so fast on the trigger to just start hating somebody who we loved so much since ever. And Redcon 1, they were really fast on making that decision, so maybe there are some other motives there, I don't know, I don't know. But me, as a fan of bodybuilding, I can't just start hating Arnold in one day, all of a sudden. Again, he said he lost his temper, what he said was too much, so you guys go ahead and tell me what do you think, did this change your mind about Arnold? Did you even start hating him? Did you stay loyal to him? Whatever was your situation, tell me about it in the comment section down below. Anyways, here you can see that the new main sponsor of Arnold Classic is gonna be Mutant Nutrition. If you guys remember, they used to sponsor uh, Rich Piana and many other really popular guys, so they're kind of coming back on a big door, sponsoring Arnold Classic. Though, I don't know if this is the smartest decision, I, I'm sure they thought about this a lot, because a lot of people in the comment section right here are saying bad stuff about him now, and about Arnold and Arnold Classic. So it was definitely a bold thing to do at this point, but maybe it will pay out, maybe not, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. A lot of interesting and big things are happening in bodybuilding right now. They will affect bodybuilding world from now on, for sure. And another thing, aside from uh, people starting to hate Arnold, we have also, uh, as you guys heard, Jake Wood saying that the judging criteria will change and that uh, the conditioning will be a little bit more overlooked. Because previously it was overemphasized and athletes were hurting themselves and dying. 
So now Jake Wood wants to change that, and it will be changed. He said that basically, I mean, him and Jim Mannion and Tyler Mannion, they sat down and they agreed. So if they agreed, then that's pretty much it. And now the question is, in which divisions can this be implemented? So as you guys probably know, Jake Wood is huge on female bodybuilding. He really, he really supports women's bodybuilding and all women divisions. He was always into that the most, wings of strength. So I guess that is a, a, a part of bodybuilding where this change can be easily implemented because you guys know that females tend to hold on to more body fat percent than males and also more subcutaneous water. So it's definitely much harder for them to get ripped and they have to do all kinds of crazy stuff and basically ruin their health. So that's probably all female divisions. I get that. That makes sense. But as far as bodybuilding and all male divisions, so bodybuilding, I don't see that happening. I mean, right now the winner is Big Ramy. Big Ramy, he's already not conditioned. And the second guy was Brandon Curry, and then he had Phil Heat. Both of those two guys were more conditioned. Hardy Chopin as well, Bonac too. So the guy that won was least conditioned. But that's not really the case overall. I mean, he won because he deserved it. He was the best that night. He was the most conditioned, but everything else he was better at. So before we had Sean Roden shredded. Phil Heat shredded. Uh, Dexter Jackson shredded. Dorian Yates peeled. So all of these guys before Ronnie Coleman to shredded. We're, we're just shredded. So if, if we had another bodybuilder, a clone of Big Ramy, who came 15% sharper, of course the judges would give it to him. I don't think that that's just debatable. But maybe we can implement this, this difference in, for example, classic physique. If this change was implemented before Texas Pro, the outcome would definitely be different. Because in classic physique, aside from muscularity, conditioning, symmetry, posing and all that, we have another criteria and that is lines, classic lines, classic shape. So if that's really a big factor and conditioning stops being such a big factor, then the outcome of this show would be different. Logan Franklin wouldn't have been second, he would be first. And Robert Timms would be second. Because here is a great photo that represents what actually happened that night. So the only thing that is classic about Robert Timms, in my opinion, is his small waist and small joints. In this front lat spread, the way he is posing with his arms lifted so much high, so high, and his lats looking like this, popping like that, and overall the shape of his entire physique, it's just not classic, guys. I mean, it's it, it's more classic than, I don't know, Hiratada Yabagishi, but it's definitely not more classic than Logan Franklin, not even close. Logan is, Logan is probably one of the most classic guys today. But he wasn't super crisp, the guy beat him on conditioning. So, again, if this was the change that they implemented before, the outcome of this show would be different. This change could easily, without a problem, be implemented in men's physique. Because these guys, as you can see, uh, they didn't really look that shredded back in 2015. I mean, they had more of a beach body look. And today, they look like bodybuilders with no legs. I mean, they look really muscular. So, I guess that also wouldn't be a trouble. Anyways, talking about men's physique, I have to mention Jeremy Buendia with a new physique update. He gets better and better. He's posing like a bodybuilder. Brion here asked him, is he gonna be coming back? He didn't really say that he will. I think he, he will just take more time, think about it eventually once he sorts some other things in his life. But right now he looks great. He looks much improved. He looks like uh, he is actually preparing for a comeback and not in man's physique because he's posing like a bodybuilder. I know he loves bodybuilding in his soul. That's how he started. He did man's physique because he was good for it. Now there is classic physique. And I, I believe he will come back. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but eventually. He's a young guy, and he's improving. So eventually, once he packs enough muscle and overall improves on his package, as his plan is, right here you can see in the description, he wants to improve, he wants to get better every day. Eventually, once he really reaches that high level, and I think he can do that, I think he has the genetics for it, and he has the work ethic for sure, if he's just willing, then he can do that, then he can come back and do man's look classic physique, actually, and... I don't know how well will he do, but it would be very interesting to see him over there. 
But how much success can he expect when we have freaks like this doing the Mr. Olympia right now? Last year this guy was I think top 5 or top 6, Brian Jones. And this is him right now. He looks absolutely humongous. He looks freaking huge. And uh, I think his plans for the future is to switch to bodybuilding. I think somebody told me this in the comment section. As you can see, he's wearing bodybuilding trunks. He's not wearing uh, classic physique trunks. So why is that? It's probably because he believes in bodybuilding. He loves bodybuilding more. And he's just not big enough to, to, to be on a Mr. Olympia stage against the other guys in the open. So as for now, he will, be, he will keep competing in classic physique. And as soon as he is big enough, I believe he'll, he'll make that transfer. And with this kind of genetics, with this kind of freaky lines, small waist, crazy axe taper and this kind of density, this kind of hard, round look, I think he can be a great bodybuilder. But can he take Chris Bumstead out this year? I don't think so. I don't think anybody can do that. I think everybody pretty much knows that. He is a champion. He is not going anywhere. And this is most recent update of him. So you can't really see much. You can see his back. It looks great. You can see his skin, how thin it is. So I think he's right on track. Uh, this is a, a post on Instagram and it is four different angles of him doing the same exercise. It's nothing new, don't expect much on the next slide. So it's just him rowing and you can get the idea. Look, I mean, he's big, he's big, he's round and he's incredibly classic and he's getting in shape. So this year is going to be his as well. But it's going to be interesting to see how much uh, is Brian Jones, for example, close to him now. Uh, are any other guys going to push Chris more? We'll see what's going to be happening at that Mr. Olympia Classic Physique stage. As for now, that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.